Have you ever wondered how much sugar is actually in a piece of gum? Or how much sugar is really in anything? We're gonna figure out the percent composition of sugar in double bubble bubble gum. So if you've got any of these double bubble bubble gums at home, go ahead and grab some and join me in this lab on percent composition. By the end of this video, you should be able to solve percent compositions for sugar in bubble gum. wanted to know the percent amount of sugar in a double bubble bubble gum, how could we do so? Think about how we would find a percent to begin with. Go ahead and pause the video here and take a quick second to think about it. Did you think about this? I hope you did. A part per whole. Any part divided by a whole times 100 is equal to a percent. So if you wanted to find the percent of anything, literally anything, if you take the piece and divide it by the whole and then multiply that answer by 100, you will get the percent of whatever it is you're looking for. So for example, if I scored 45 points, that would be the part, out of a 78 point test, that's the whole, what was my percentage score on said test? All I'd have to do is take 45, divide that by 78, take that answer, multiply it by 100, and that would give me my percent. Here, I would have scored a 57.69%. Womp womp. Looks like I didn't pass that test. So likewise, if we wanted to find the percent amount of sugar in bubble gum, we would do the same thing. We would just take the grams of sugar, that's the part, divide it by the grams of the entire piece of gum with the sugar still in it, that's the whole, multiply that whole thing by 100 to give us our percent value. So then you might be asking yourself, well, how am I going to extract the sugar out of this gum? How am I going to get all that sugar out? Well, I'm so glad you asked. I am going to chew this delicious little piece of bubble gum until all the sugar is gone. How do I know the sugar is gone? When it's not sweet anymore. So it's a little bit qualitative in the fact that I'm judging based off of my own taste buds here. But we'll get the idea since we'll do it four times. We'll have four different pieces of bubble gum so we can average them all together and have a better idea of what the true percent composition of sugar is in double bubble bubble gum. Of course, this also means that after I chew this, it's gonna be literally laden with my saliva. So I have to give it some time to dry. So this video is going to occur over a couple days so I can let my bubble gum that is chewed with all the sugar out of it dry and then weigh it after it's chewed and dried. So I've pulled out my nifty little scale, like my little, little tiny little scale for at home. Since, you know, those big scientific scales cost a lot of money. So right now I've just got this little guy and he's going to be our helper for figuring out the mass of the gum before I chew it and the gum after I chew it. All right, I've got my four pieces of gum laid out on their wrappers, all nice and labeled, one through four, for each one with a Sharpie. Now I'm going to weigh them all before and plug in those values into our table. All right, now that I've got all my masses accounted for, I can start chewing. My jaw's gonna hurt after this, big time. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay because science requires experimentation. It's gonna take forever. <laughs> oh my jaw. Who chews four pieces of bubble gum back to back? <laughs> Why did I sign up for this? You know, normally these darn things lose their flavor in like T minus 30 seconds. What the heck? Is this like the special double bubble gum, bubble gum from Willy Wonka? The everlasting gobstopper? <laughs> so I'm still chewing because it's still sweet. And I'm waiting for all the sweetness to go away so that I know I've pretty much ingested the majority of the sugar and extracted the sugar from the gum. But it's taking really long. <laughs> there we go. There's that familiar rubber taste of the uh, sugarless gum right at the end there. Great. So now I'm gonna take this gum out, put it on my wrapper, let it dry, do the same thing with the other three bubble gums. Oh my poor jaw. And then we'll come back 
and mask them again after they're done drying. 72 hours later. All right, so it's been three days since I've left my gum sitting on the windowsill to dry and hopefully get all my saliva out of it. Uh, unfortunately, here in Virginia, it has been very humid over the last few days because it's just raining nonstop. So hopefully the gum is dry enough at this point to get kind of a good idea. But if you have the time to wait, I would recommend waiting even longer till it's completely tacky. Now the gum samples that I have are pretty much all the way dry, but they're still a little bit flexible. So you might want to wait, I don't know, even longer. If you wanted to wait until the point where it couldn't even move anymore, where it was completely stiff again, that would be the best case scenario. But I don't want to wait till that point to finish up this video with you guys. So I'm just going to pass these samples in front of the camera so you can see. Some of them are more dry than others. Some have a different color pink, which I'm assuming would mean it's a little bit more dry than the other samples present. But uh, you get the idea. So there's sample number one, sample number two, sample number three, and sample number four. This is probably the most dry strip. I think it was closest to our air vent for our heater, so it's probably gotten the most dry out of any of them. Notice that I flattened out the gum pieces. Why did I do this? I flattened them out so that there would hopefully be more surface area for them to dry out faster from my saliva. It's better than leaving it in a clumped up ball with all of the spit and moisture all trapped inside. Now that you have gotten to feast your eyes on my chewed gum, you're welcome. Let's weigh our samples now on our little mini scale. So cute. Sample number one weighs 3.9 grams. Sample number two weighs 3.6 grams. Sample number three weighs 4.5. And as I suspected, sample number four does appear to be the most dry because it weighs 3.1 grams. Especially since it started off being the one that weighed the most out of all the samples. It now weighs the least. So let's get back to the objective for the whole reason as to why we were chewing gum and then creepily letting it sit on our windowsill to dry for an indefinite amount of time to then remass chewed gum and do what? We're trying to find the percent composition of sugar in this bubble gum. So we need to figure out, well, first and foremost, how much of that was sugar? The assumption here was that when I chewed the gum, I removed the sugar by ingesting the sugar into my body. So before chewing the gum, it would include the sugar, and after chewing the gum and drying it, it would supposedly lack that sugar because I have eaten it all. So in other words, we need to figure out the mass of the sugar, the difference of those two values. We need to take the unchewed gum value minus the value of the dried chewed gum to figure out the mass of the sugar in each piece of double bubble bubble gum. So let's do that for all four samples. I'm gonna take my mass before minus my mass after. So for my first one, that was 7.1 minus 3.9. For my second one, that was 6.5 minus 3.6. For my third sample, that was 7.2 minus 4.5. And moving on to the fourth sample now, we had 7.3 minus 3.1. Plug that into your calculator to figure out your answers. Now that we know the mass of sugar in each piece of our bubble gum, now remember this is the assumed mass of sugar because there could still be some saliva left in the gum itself, which would increase the mass. And we don't know if all the sugar is truly gone because this was a purely qualitative test in that it was based off of my taste buds and my taste buds might be different than your taste buds. Some of us are super tasters and you can taste sugar until the very last sugar molecule, like my husband. He is actually classified as a super taster. Cooking is very difficult for him sometimes. Anyhow, now that we have the four separate masses of sugar, we can average these all together. We did multiple tests because in science, you don't just want one test that has a lot of error associated to it. The more tests we do, the better our data is. If you haven't seen Ozark on Netflix yet, we're just in season three, and the main character, Marty Bird, makes this point very clear as he's laundering money through a boat casino, that with more data, you have a better chance of extrapolating correct answers. When there's too little data, there's way too much error and way too many variables to account for. So there's strength in numbers. When you do science, do it more than once. So to average, we just need to add up all of our answers 
and then divide by 4, since there's 4 all together for that average. Adding all those values together, I get 13, and there's 4 samples, so 13 divided by 4 gives me 3.25 as my average mass of sugar in double bubble bubble gum per piece. Now that we know the mass of the sugar on average that would be per piece of gum, we could now calculate the average number of moles of sugar in double bubble bubble gum using dimensional analysis. So anytime you read a question and it's asking you for something but gives you something else, we're going to always use our magical line to freedom format, our dimensional analysis format. So we're going to draw our magical line to freedom with an equal sign and a space for our answer. The goal here goes at the end of the line. So our goal units are the average moles. So we want to find the mole of sugar in a piece of double bubble bubble gum. And now that molecular formula is for sugar. So I have a given and that given is something I already calculated. That happened to be my 3.25 grams of sugar. That's going to go on the first part of my line. Anytime you see a dimensional analysis setup where you have to go from grams to moles or moles to grams, you're going to use our fancy conversion factor known as molar mass because molar mass has both a mass and a mole value in it, hence molar mass. But how do we find this molar mass, this elusive molar mass that you speak of, ma'am? You gotta look at your periodic table and add up all the parts in sugar, that's our carbon, our hydrogen, and our oxygen for however many atoms are present to figure out the molar mass of the whole compound. Carbon's mass, if you're looking at the periodic table, has a mass of 12.011, and there happens to be 12 atoms present, so we need to multiply that by 12. Hydrogen's mass from the periodic table has a value of 1.008, and there's 22 of those atoms, so we need to multiply it by 22. For oxygen, I'm always just gonna round its mass to 16 because I don't wanna torture myself by writing 15.999 every single time. So there's a mass of 16 per oxygen atom, and there happens to be 11 oxygen atoms in one molecule of sugar. Then I just need to add up all of those values together for my overall molar mass. If I add all those three values together, that should give me the molar mass of one molecule of sugar. Ah, oh, sugar. Ah, oh, honey, honey. You are my candy girl. That's one of my daughter's favorite songs. Anyways, we now have the molar mass of one molecule of sugar. 342.308 grams per one mole. Again, this is a domino, so we could flip this just the same. Now, remember, this gram value is always going to be stuck to the number, so you can't just flip the gram and the mole like this. You can't do that. That is not the same thing. However, you can flip it where the gram is literally glued to the 342.308 and the mole is glued to the value of one. So when you flip it, it can also look like this. So these are the two possible ways that we can write our molar mass for sugar. We need to use the one that gives us grams on bottom so that this grams will cancel and leave us with our goal unit of moles. So hopefully you're noticing I need to use this format in order for that to work. So I'm gonna take that and plug it in in my conversion factor spot, one mole of sugar. Notice that I'm going to label it every single time. I know it's tedious and some of these molecules take forever to write out like this one, for example, but it's well worth your while to do so. Why? Because there's going to be dimensional analysis problems that will end up taking an entire page across. So literally, if you turn a page sideways, you will draw a line from one end to the other and it'll take up that much room. If you're not labeling correctly or diligently throughout, you're gonna get lost as to what number belongs to who. So make sure you are being diligent and practicing your labeling throughout. All right, just like in any other math sense, when we have two numbers next to each other, they multiply. So this number is going to multiply by this number. And anytime we have number over another number, that means divide. So that all is going to be divided by that value. Plugging that into our calculator, we get 3.25 times one just gives us 3.25 divided by 342.308, and we get 0.009. Ta-da! I'm gonna round it to 0.0095 since it was 49, so we'll round up to the next 
value for that five. So in the average piece of double bubble bubble gum, you get 0.0095 moles of sugar. So then what's the percent composition of sugar in gum? Well, we need a part per whole. So our part in this case would be the sugar, and that's the average we calculated. So the average amount of sugar in the piece of gum was 3.25 grams of sugar for the average piece of gum. But what's our whole? Our whole is the mass of the gum before we chewed it. That includes the sugar. However, we had four pieces of gum before I chewed it. So really we need the average of the beginning mass of all four pieces before we can do this calculation. So just as before, when we find an average, we want to add up and divide by the amount present. So that would be four. So 7.1 plus 6.5 plus 7.2 plus 7.3 gives us 28.1 divided by four gives us 7.025 as the average mass of a piece of double bubble bubble gum. Now that we know the whole is an average of the beginning mass of all four pieces, that was our 7.025 grams for the bubble gum. And we know that our part is the average sugar that we calculated from our experimentation. We can now divide those two values, multiply by 100 to figure out what percent of the bubble gum is sugar. When we divide those two values, we end up with a whopping 0.4626 as a decimal that now needs to be multiplied by 100, so times 100. And multiplying anything by 100 just means you're moving it two decimal places because of the two zeros. So one, two, all the way over gives us 46.26%. So almost half of a piece of double bubble gum is sugar by percent. That's nuts. So that value right there was the entire reason for this lesson, figuring out the percent composition of sugar in double bubble bubble gum. But additionally, I'd like to introduce the concept of calories. So if there are 4.1 calories per gram of sugar, that's a real value, by the way, how many calories did I consume by chewing all four pieces of gum? So again, we know that on average, each piece of gum has 3.25 grams of sugar in it. And I'm saying that, hey, in each gram of sugar, there's 4.1 calories. So that would look like this, 4.1 calories per one gram of sugar. So reading that question where it's saying how many calories did I consume by chewing these grams of sugar, that sure seems like I'm given something and they're asking me for something else. That is a dimensional analysis setup. So we need to draw our magical line to freedom, put an equal sign and a space for our answer. We're solving for calories now. We have 3.25 grams of sugar per piece of gum. And we know that in each piece of sugar, there's 4.1 calories per gram. I need this grams to cancel to leave me with calories. So I'm gonna take this and plug it in as is where grams is on the bottom already. 4.1 calories per one gram of sugar. Now my grams can cancel and I'm left with my goal units so I know I did it right. That means I just need to plug and chug in my calculator now. So 3.25 times 4.1 divided by one. When I multiply those two together and divide it by one, which just gives me the same answer anyways, I get 13.325 calories. Now again, this was for one piece of gum because the 3.25 grams of sugar was the average for one piece of gum. I chewed four pieces of gum, so this is a little bit of a trick question. I need to take my final answer and still multiply it by four to figure out the total amount of calories I actually ate. Ladies and gentlemen, I had a whopping 53.3 calories in gum. Now that you know about a fun little lab to do at home if you have some double bubble bubble gum laying around, I also want you to think like a chemist and reflect on this lab experiment as a whole. What assumption was made about this change in the mass of the gum before and after I chewed it or before and after you chewed it? If you happen to also follow along and do this at home, that'd be awesome. Please tell me if you did in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. And was that a valid assumption to assume what we did in the change in mass of the gum. 
I talked about it throughout the video a little bit, so hopefully you can reflect on that and kind of make your own assumption, your own conclusion on that. And also, how would the results be affected, our final results here, if a lot of saliva was left in the chewed pieces of gum? So everyone knows that pregnant women make a lot more saliva. So let's say a pregnant woman was doing this lab experiment and there was just a ton of saliva left in the gum. Or for example, maybe you weighed it the next day instead of waiting six, seven, eight days for it to dry and there was still a lot of saliva left in the chewed pieces of gum. Or maybe you didn't flatten it out for surface area and you left all of your saliva trapped in the center like a gusher of the gum. How would that affect your final results in figuring out how much sugar for percent composition is made up of double bubble bubble gum? Hope you had fun. Give me a quacks up and subscribe to my channel for more educational content. And that's all for now, ducklings. Till next time. No ducks, no glory.